A hadith uh, that comes to mind in this particular regard, and it's a hadith graded Hassan by the scholars of the sciences of hadith, is where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said that think about the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not necessarily sit there and try to ponder and conceptualize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this one will lead you at times to disbelieve because shaitan comes to a man and he says, this was created by this person and that person came into existence on this date and that person came into existence on this date and the creation was created and then who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence disbelief occurs within the person's heart. We are living in a time where we are used to empirical evidence. Everything needs to be tried and tested. And for us to believe, we need to try and test. And this is not necessarily the accurate way of going about things. Because if we be real with ourselves, there's many, many things we just know and take for granted, even within what we know today as modern science. Not every single person that goes to a science school tries and tests everything. That's the reality. We take many facts as just facts and move on with life, right? So not everything will you be able to try and test and definitely not something that is above the human capacity, above the human mind. So we have to then go to the source. We have to then go to divine guidance to figure out how we can treat this. And this treatment is fi found within the Quran again and again. This tendency of doubt and the treatment of that is that we look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ponder this creation. And when we see the perfection at times and the imperfection at times, all of these will slowly but surely become reasons for us to accept the fact that there must be someone behind all of this. And this to some is known as the idea of the intelligent designer, right? Some who like to disbelieve in Allah, they will say there's someone behind this, but we have no idea who's the one that is orchestrating all of this. So if you are at times falling within doubt, I tell you one of the beautiful keys that we find within the Quran is to look at the existence around you and think about this existence and ponder this existence and how this existence could have never ever come into existence except if there was someone behind all of this, it can't be a chance. Think about the bounties and the perfection of those bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why whenever Allah wants to remind you of Himself, what does He say? Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Wa fi anfusikum afala ta'qilun. And in your souls, do you not think as well? In your bodies, you see signs. If you have a vein running within your body that's miles long and you're not even a few feet, what do you think this is a sign of? And the signs will continue and continue and continue. And I have tried this, by the way. In many, many gatherings, I would say that, look, if you go to that area, which is 400 kilometers away from you, have you ever pondered at the beauty of this particular area? And many would say, yes, we have. Did you at, not, at that point not naturally understand that this perfection couldn't have come except because there was someone perfect to make it? And naturally, almost everyone would respond, yes. But I said, when you move away from there, you don't feel that same feeling. Why? Because the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the key of belief within His creation and for us to ponder this beauty and nature and for us to ponder the existence of everything around us, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our belief. And I'll tell you one more thing. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in the Quran, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. This is a guidance that is asked by me. This is a guidance that is asked by everyone on this panel. This is a guidance that is asked by all of us. This is a guidance that is asked by people before, after, Muslim, non-Muslim. So this is a guidance that all of us need. All of us need this guidance. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asked of this guidance on the very, very next page, He says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ That is the book. This is the book. It has no doubts within it. So if you're having a doubt, then believe you me, your key to correcting those doubts is looking within the Quran. Looking within yourself. 
It is a guidance for those who adopt piety. But one may say, well, when I look into the Quran, I find within it a problem over here. Or some Orientalist had said that there's a problem in this particular ayah. Or that one, or the other. And then a shaykh will come and he will give his responses to each one of them. And everything has been responded to already. It's done and over. But still this doubt is casted within a person's mind. Right? So what do we do? What we do is the following. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He had told us in the Quran to ponder this book. He told us two things, very, very important and very crucial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, He said, ayatihi. It's a book I've revealed so that they may ponder its verses. And when He said ayatihi, what He did is, He brought us the plural form, number one, and then He attached it to a pronoun, which is going back to Him. And in Usul al-Fiqh, this is how we derive generality within a word. So if this particular word is general, what it's rendering to us in meaning is that so that they may ponder every single one of its verses. And not just one verse by itself. If you pick things out of context, you'll find what you think to be apparently an error, but it's not. But if you look at the Qur'an from one cover to another cover, you will come up to a conclusion that there is no problems within it. And just yesterday, Sheikh Bilal was telling us a beautiful story of a man who once was a missionary when he started reading the Qur'an. By the end of the, the read of the Qur'an, he accepted Islam and then he became a caller to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you read the Qur'an from a cover to another cover, you'll find that the belief will become strengthened if you ponder all of that. Number two, the other thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, Allah says, وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ and also so that those people who have an intellect, they may come to an understanding with this book. They may be able to gain guidance from this book. They may be able to do tadakkur, which basically comes out to mean gain guidance from this book. Now, the question is, what is a lub? You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uses the word aql in the Quran, but only in a verbal form. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't use the word aql in the Quran in a noun form. But Allah uses the word lub in the Quran in a noun form. And the reason for that is because there's a difference between aql and lub, even though both of them come out to mean intellect. And aql is at times an intellect which has been tainted with preconceptions. You have an ideology already, and then you're coming into the Quran and looking at it with that particular mindset already proposed within your mind, already established within your mind. As for a lub, it's a type of mind which has been purified and cleansed of any preconceptions and any ideas beforehand. So when you go into the Qur'an, do two things. You look at the Qur'an cover to cover and don't pick out verses alone. And then you will find that this book has no doubts within it. Number two, you look at the Qur'an without any preconceptions. Anything you had been heard in terms of belief or disbelief or this or that or the other, you throw that out, you start reading the Qur'an bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Very swiftly and softly you will come into belief. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen mine and yours. No doubt... The doubt is from shaitan. Shaitan doesn't want you to believe. That's his commitment to misguide you. So he will be busy. Either as whisperings that come into your head. Or through your friends. Through the media. It's coming from many, many different angles. Those who end up studying in the sciences, in university, etc., they will get a full head-on attack with doubts about Allah. So where do we go? What do we do to remove these doubts? On one hand, you need to increase your own knowledge about Allah so that it becomes clear to you that believing in Allah is the natural way. All of the world, from one end to the other, believes in God. Those who don't believe in God are a very small minority. They may be very vocal, and that's why doubts circulate, 
But the reality is that the majority of people on the face of the earth and as far back as we know in history, all research shows everybody believed in God. And actually, that from a, an anthropological perspective, where anthropologists and psychologists and others debate about what is natural and what is learned of us and our ideas and our... What is learned is what we learn from the society we're in. We're told how to sleep, how to eat, how to walk. Society teaches us that. But the need to eat, this is natural. The need to walk is natural. What they said was, what is from society varies from culture to culture. You go around the different countries, you find some people do it, some people don't do it, so on and so forth. Whereas what is natural, meaning you're born with it, is what is everywhere. Everywhere people sleep. Now, they may sleep in different ways. But everybody sleeps. So, when we look at the issue of belief in God and we see it everywhere, then this is telling us it is natural. We are born with it. Shaitan may distort how we apply that natural belief and so we end up worshipping a variety of different things. But the basic belief in God is natural because God has placed it within us. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu had said, every child is born with that natural belief in God. So that which you have, which doubts are being raised about, is from Allah. That basic belief is correct. And that's why everybody everywhere believes. So, if you reflect on that, I think that can help to remove your doubts. And what you can do also is be around those people whose faith is firm. If your friends are those who have shaky faith, they're always talking and questioning and so on and so, then that's not good for you. You know, Prophet Muhammad had said, choose your friends well because you will be raised on the day of judgment with your friends. So if they're doubtful about God, you will share, you will do. As the Prophet also said, a person will be following the religion of his best friends. If that's what your friends are about, you need to change your friends. If the places that you hang out in, the clubs or the whatever, that's a lot of talk, you need to leave those and go to ones where they're talking about Allah. So your environment can be the tool by which shaitan puts doubts in your mind. So be careful about who you spend your time with, what you're reading, who are your best friends, etc. But no, belief in God is true. And that's why everybody everywhere at every time believes in God.